Oh, hi everyone, it's Susie again. Uh, just, we're just thinking about this whole thing, you know, and um, you know the coronavirus and everything else. I was on a plane uh, coming back from Amsterdam on uh, the 10th of March, and um, you know, I obviously got to Dubai, and then we came from Dubai to Melbourne. And on that plane, there was like a lot of different ethnicities and. There was also people from Italy um, <clears throat> that were, on, you know, going to the Grand Prix here because they were a part of the Formula One uh, racing car drivers, and they let these people in from Italy. And it turns out one of the guys had the coronavirus. So now, uh, you know, I'm supposed to isolate myself because one of the pl one of the people on the plane, uh, EK EK four hundred six Memorates, uh, had coronavirus. So it sort of made me think. My God, I mean, even in Australia, they're still letting people in um, right now, which is just crazy. And um, just got me thinking about this is probably the biggest change of our lives we've ever seen. And, and where to from here? Because, uh, you know, it's a very scary thought uh, with this um, coronavirus and how bad is it? And do we know the truth or do we not know the truth? And, you know, is it airborne? Is it not? Why is it affecting so many people in Italy? Uh, we know that Italy's got a very old population, but why is it such a hot spot in Italy, you know, over and above even compared to China? Because every time you look at the stats in Italy, uh, they're going up and up and up, which is which is a bit scary. So, um, uh, you know, I've mentioned this, um, this here before, this one here, uh, the coronavirus page, and, you know, Italy is like about 22,000 people now, and... Uh, you know about 1400 dead um, and it just it's just incredible how these numbers are rising all the time and um, you know like everyone's focused on washing their hands and you know worried about you know whether they're gonna get it get treated you know whether they're gonna get it from a gym or something else or something else and um, you know, now it's in 142 countries in the world compared to the SARS virus which was in 2004 which was only in 29 countries in the world so um, I don't really want to scare people but I know they're working on a vaccine and everything else but it got me thinking to you know where to from here how do we position ourselves uh, in a world environment like this uh, given that this virus is going to close down uh, a lot of corporates a lot of businesses because people can't earn revenue or the business can't earn revenue uh, it's going to slow down global growth. What does it mean for for asset markets? What does it mean for markets? And how should I uh, position myself in terms of my own personal finances, uh, given what's happening in the rest of the world and people have to self-isolate and work from home and those sort of things? So just got me thinking out loud, uh, you know, what, where to from here and what, what should I be doing myself to... Uh, to obviously mitigate the risk of this uh, this this terrible violence, it's uh, virus that's affecting people. But you know, you know, the fact that it's in 142 countries and getting and and more, uh, clearly it's going to slow down. You know, travel. Uh, you know, people aren't travelling. They're not going to restaurants. They're not going to places where you meet. You know, cinemas and those sort of things. And um, you know, will this last a long time? Given the vaccine uh, may take 12 months to. To actually, uh, you know, to actually come to the market, and will it, will it, you know, fix uh, people and the vi and get rid of the virus? So, um, again, I'm just, as I said, I'm just thinking out loud for this. But, um, you know, so again, you know, it's going to slow down basically people's, uh, you know, what they do. Uh, obviously, you know, the not, you know, the, the medical companies and the drug companies are going to do well with this. Uh, they should. Uh, clearly, the companies that have, you know, hand wash and face masks and, uh, you know, all the sorts of things that you need to clean, keep yourself clean, like soap, like, you know, you're going to shower more, so water's going to go up a lot more. You're going to buy more, you know, uh, hair stuff to keep yourself clean. You're going to wash your clothes more. You're going to be very concerned about where you put your hands. I mean, gloves might even come back in. You know, women used to wear gloves in the olden days. Um, you know, people aren't going to, you know, they're going to be wearing gloves and maybe hats and, uh, you know, obviously more face masks, even though in Asia people tend to wear face masks. Uh, in Western countries, we don't tend to wear face masks. So will we tend to will we be wearing more face masks in, in Western countries, for example? You know, when we go out for dinner or if we're not, if we're going to go out for dinner at all, when we go out for dinner or will we be too scared to go out to the restaurants and, 
and that sort of thing. So what it means is more people are going to work from home. So people will be, you know, developing their own home offices. So that would be good for, for, for companies uh, that, that actually sell, uh, you know, home offices like Officeworks, for example. Uh, people are probably going to cook more. So it's going to sort of be a trend back to the olden days, you know, the 1930s, I guess, where you used to, you know, um, grow your own vegetables and, you know, have your own vegetables in the backyard, all that sort of thing. And, and maybe that's not a bad thing in itself. Uh, you'll be growing your own vegetables and, you know, cooking more food and, uh, you know, being being a lot healthier. You'll be working out from your own home. I'm thinking about putting a gym in the backyard, that sort of thing. Um, again, you, you'll see uh, your own friends, and, but you probably won't mix too much with other cultures. So maybe it's going to not be good in that sense. Um, you know, doctors are going to be needed, you know, more and more and more, you know, in country areas of Australia or country areas where you live, that sort of thing. Uh, the the population in the Western world is aging. The average, the average age of the baby boomer is about 67 years of age. I'm a Generation Xer, so I sit in between and there's Generation Y and then there's the Millenniums. And the Millenniums, uh, Generation Y and the Xers, you know, we, we either have money or we don't. Certainly the Millenniums don't. Um, you know, Generation Y and Generation X, some do, some don't. But the baby boomers carry the wealth. And the question is, would the baby boomers, you know, will stay in the equity market? And I don't think they will because they'll be risk averse to, to what's happening in the equity market and they'll want to take their money and run. Uh, also, some people have lost a lot of wealth since 2008. So does that mean that people have to work longer? Uh, does it also mean that unemployment rises, which I think it will, unemployment will rise, which means consumer, you know, consumer spend uh, just on luxury type goods or anything is going to reduce quite dramatically. Uh, people will be spending what they need for necessities, but not like the Gucci bag or, or anything like that. They'll be buying what they need and that's about it. Um, so again, all these thoughts are going through my mind about how we should position ourselves going forward. Uh, in terms of this change because it is a dramatic change in, in terms of all our lives uh, you know obviously air um, airway stocks are going to go down you know oil is going to continue to go down uh, you know businesses that attach the airways uh, are not going to do too well and probably close down um, you know even commuting to the office um, you know if you have depending on how you commute uh, people you know obviously park to go to the office so well parking areas uh, you know decrease uh, you know go broke or whatever it might be so it means a, a complete change uh, for the way that we're doing our life and how we're doing our life um, you know we know in Western countries there's a lot of older people um, we know in um, you know the other non-Western countries uh, whether it be the Middle East whether it be Africa or India there's a lot of young people so uh, will, will that be the tipping scale um, you know, where we see the dominance of other countries and other ecosystems compared to the Western system, given that the Western system has more, you know, much more older people uh, than, than, say, uh, you know, Indonesia or Africa or the Middle East. Uh, will, it, will business then focus more on the Middle East, uh, Africa, uh, you know, these young countries like Ripple is doing? You know, face masks are clearly, you know, in demand. Will that continue? You know, whoever invests in face masks will do well or companies that have face masks will do well, which they are at the moment. Uh, will that just be a given that we all wear face masks? Um, you know, will we wear protection on our eyes? Will we, as I said, have gloves, for example? You know, money. Money is dirty. I mean, you know, again, money uh, has a lot of germs on it. So. Will there be, you know, a thing against money, physical money, like in China, people aren't holding currency. They're scared they'll get germs from money. You know, currency, fiat currency is falling. You know, the US dollar is falling, you know, against the yen. Is it the end of the fiat, fiat uh, currency that we see in this market? Is that the end of everything? You know, bond yields are way too low. You know, bond yields will go higher in yield because they're not reflecting inflation. You know, bond yields are way too low uh, and they've been literally manipulated by the Fed and the central banks who have been putting more and more money into the system. So do we see a time 
when yields are much higher, like mortgage rates are much higher, you know, business loans are much higher because yields are at all time lows and they shouldn't be there. Um, you know, do we see a time, you know, when it's harder to get credit because the banks will not lend out credit? Is it the demise of the banking system? You know, all these things go in my mind. You know, do the banks not make the margin they used to? And maybe possibly they don't. Maybe we should be selling in the banks as well. Anything traditional to the traditional finance system, uh, we should be selling. Uh, Again, um, you know, we should be looking at new technology possibly. You know, high yield is, is expensive. The equity markets are expensive. The baby boomer is going to get out of the equity market because they're retired and they won't want that risk. Corporate yields are expensive. So do we see a lot of corporates uh, tipping over because, you know, their funding is becoming more expensive? Uh, do we see also banks decline and become bankrupt? because they're not getting the business that they used to. And that's a possibility, certainly in you know Italy, certainly in Spain, certainly in Portugal, uh, certainly in uh, any other country that's struggling like Greece, for example. So, you know, corporate yields, it might be harder to borrow money from the banks. I mean, clearly we need more technology. The technology that exists is still old technology aligned to the fiat markets and the fiat fiat banking system. So crypto technology can change the world. Uh, you know, we've seen that with VeChain, how they can tag food and monitor food from the source to your plate and you ensure that it is proper food, you know, that's not that hasn't been tainted, where you can get sick or die from it, these sort of things. So certainly when we look at cryptocurrency technology, it can change the world given the environment that we're living in today okay um so in my mind cryptocurrency technology technology that works is cheap uh, and that's the asset class that is very cheap compared to every other asset class out there even in terms of property now certainly in australia property is very expensive and possibly there's reasons for that because we're a long way away from other um, other countries you know we have a pure environment you know we have bees here that aren't affected by the, the the bee virus it's killing all bees you know globally we don't have that you know there's possibly a reason why the Australian property market is expensive but um, you know all these things are going in my mind to where should I invest you know should I be buying gold and silver because you know relatively speaking to every other asset class they're actually cheap Cryptocurrency is cheap relative to every other asset class. Gold and silver are cheap. Gold uh, would reflect and should be reflecting the real inflation in the system, even though the statisticians globally everywhere have said inflation is low, but the reality is inflation is not low. You know, foods through the food price inflation is through the roof. Utilities, water, electricity. Uh, you know, infrastructure for roads, you know, the cost of going on the road, these sort of things. But what we'll find with this cryptocurrency uh, technology, things will change, but also with this virus, people won't be commuting as much. You know, they won't be going out as much. So anything that's connected to people uh, is going to have a decline in my mind. Uh, I, I think this virus is probably here to stay and we need to around, arrange our lives around this virus as well as the way we position ourselves in terms of our financial position. Uh, clearly with social media and everything else, there'll be a boom in that because you can do things from home and do blogs and write things. But ser seriously, in terms of the workforce that we've known, of, we've known it as traditionally where people work in a, in a room all together, maybe that's not gonna exist in the future. There's gonna be more home offices and people work individually by themselves at home. These are all the things. Uh, in my mind, food price inflation is through the roof and it's going to continue to go up. Water's going to go up. You know, basically, you know, uh, water's going to go up. Anything connected with good food, good food source is going to go up. But the bottom line is, in my mind, crypto is cheap. The technology is there to deal with the, the viruses or whatever it might be. Um, you know, there's a move away from cash crypto digital assets seems to be the way to go and 
again it's just you know me thinking out loud to where I should position myself uh, money's becoming worthless it's old tech you know there's devaluation in the system you know you're sitting uh, you know US dollars does it keep declining if you're sitting in Venezuelan you know or the Bolivian currency you know bad government management you know you don't want to be exposed to governments and their mismanagement of the money system and then have your savings being eroded because the governments and the politicians have done such a bad you know bad story on the management of the government economics thus you know thus bring down you know the currency as well as the money system okay again where do you invest you know for property would you invest in you know the Asian countries or you know uh, emerging market countries when you know potentially uh, this virus could be out of control um, again you know it's a very selective bet I guess the thing is when you know in times when there's inflation in the system which I believe there is you have to invest in hard assets and that includes property but in saying that uh, if interest rates go up then essentially it brings down the capital valuation of a property but it means that rent rent will go up so again I have all these things going around in my brain to to how I should position myself and what what does it mean going forward uh, it, it is very interesting and it's very hard to know but do we invest in first world property you know, do we invest in technology but either way we have the black swan of everything which is going to change markets forever and the way we live forever so guys this is all food for thought uh, I'd be interested in your comments uh, please look after yourself and uh, please come back to me if you've got any ideas thanks very much Susie